what's up everyone, it's Jan Boers, new video, and today I will be talking about scoreboard and how scoreboard is affecting Eurovision. If we can trust the app, if we can trust the fun, free voting and how it correlates with reality. I again did my crazy math and also I will tell you what I think, how it will affect this year. It will be a podcast a little bit. The conclusions, it's not about to have my top 10, top 5 or so what, but I will be commenting what's happening in the scoreboard and how possibly it will affect 2024 Eurovision in correlation with the past. Actually, I repeated the whole beginning just with different words. Words, words, words. Let's talk. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. I will ask you to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you don't miss my next upcoming videos. Also watch my previous videos. Also consider buying me a coffee or giving me a super like to support this channel, my creation and of course, however you want, but definitely write me in the comments below what do you think about this video, about how you read the statistics or what do you just think in general about Eurovision this year. And definitely tell me if you are using this up. It's Eurovision scoreboard. I'm using it and for you it makes sense and also I received because of it many interesting data. For example this year your favorite songs, your favorite songs are Italy, Switzerland, Croatia, Belgium, Greece, Lithuania, Netherlands, Austria, Ukraine and Norway. They are top 10 and the rest received like significantly less points or votes or whatever. I did a little bit statistic like how often the users of scoreboard are accurate in selecting this top 10 and also non qualifiers because those are the biggest things at Eurovision. Not to qualify, this is the big thing or to qualify of course. And then who's gonna be top 10? No one really cares about 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Pitifully but it is what it is because most of the points more likely, not in every Eurovision but more likely, most of the points will receive those top 10 countries, even from public, even from juries, kind of more likely from public. And then the rest are receiving something, you know, 30, 40, 50, 0, 2, whatever. So this is not really that relevant. But I was curious about how correlation in the past, I started in 2017 until 2023, how this is accurate, how often scoreboard predicts top 10, the winner, and also the losers. So I did crazy maths again. I will show you, right, guys? Like, uh, I did this crazy math. Also, this. Because actually, I'm very, very curious how those statistics can affect everything. So let's start in 2017, right? Reality versus scoreboard. 2017, in general, like around 65% chance that you will take in scoreboard the top 10. More likely not. And this includes also top 10 from public vote, but also from the overall top 10, including juries. It's not accurate in any of it, even not in predicting winners. So this is probably also how bubble is relevant. It's a lot of people, but the Eurovision is so huge that it's like one, two percentage of all the people who will be voting or maybe even 10, 15, 20 percent. It's still not enough, you know. So this is just how crazy we are taking it and how far from reality we are sometimes. We, some, we are sometimes are. We sometimes are. And I just want to show you in 2017, 60% in uh, top 10 from scoreboard were Belgium, Bulgaria, Italy, France, Azerbaijan, Portugal, Moldova, Sweden, UK, and Denmark, where France, Azerbaijan, UK, and Denmark didn't make it, didn't make it to top 10 at all. And also the order was completely different. Portugal won, but from in scoreboard was six. Bulgaria was second, here was second, okay. But then, for example, Italy third, here five, and so on. Also, if I compare it from for public vote, for example, France didn't even make it to scoreboard, uh, to top 10. In scoreboard was fourth, but by public was 10. So at least in here was a coloration. But for example, UK and Denmark, 21st respectively 22nd place even by public not even close by the scores you know in 2018 it was this very similar 60 percent chance the winner was cyprus but israel won also in 2017 belgium was the one with the winner from scoreboard portugal won so not winner uh not winner good prediction not first place good prediction it was cyprus in here but cyprus was second but then four mistakes 
It was top 10 by scoreboard was Cyprus, Israel, Bulgaria, France, Czechia, Estonia, Italy, Finland, Germany and Ukraine. But Bulgaria, France, or Bulgaria, France, Finland and Ukraine didn't make it to top 10 at all. They just weren't there. 60% chance. In 2019, scoreboard, Netherlands, this was a winner. That was a second to public winner, but okay. 80% chance. Netherlands, Italy, Switzerland, Norway, Cyprus, Iceland, Malta, Azerbaijan, Australia, Russia. Cyprus and Malta didn't make it to top 10, but 80% chance. That was very close. It was absolutely almost correct. And you would say like, okay, less, a little bit less countries, they could make it. In 2021, 70% chance. So it's more likely not three, four countries, two and five. You know, it's not accurate. But the winner was accurate in here. Scoreboard Italy, public Italy, winner Italy in all you know, overall, Italy, Switzerland, France, Ukraine, Cyprus, Malta, San Marino, Finland, Lithuania, Azerbaijan were in scoreboard top 10, but Cyprus, San Marino and Azerbaijan didn't make it. In 2022, the winner in scoreboard was Spain, but Spain didn't win the public vote. Spain didn't even win. So the top 10, Spain, Sweden, Netherlands, Italy, UK, Ukraine, Greece, Serbia, Norway, France, but Netherlands and France didn't make it to top 10, not even to top 10. In 2023, that that was a madness. I don't know why is that. Is that because the only public voting in uh, semifinals will make such a difference in creation or the hype just goes so, such crazy that it doesn't reflect reality because you can I can clearly tell one conclusion over here already that the hype really works on scoreboard doesn't reflect reality at all. So in here, 50% accuracy of scoreboard. In top 10 were Finland on the first place, first place by public, but didn't win. Finland, Sweden, Norway, Austria, France, Israel, Spain, Czechia, Armenia, and Slovenia in top 10. But Austria, France, Spain, Armenia, and Slovenia didn't make it to top 10. Not even close, right? Big difference. In my opinion, the hype over reality, realistic except expectations, and it wasn't even close by the public voting, you know, it's not the, that the jury is making the difference. Actually, most of the winners are made by public choice, even though, and also public, if the public winner wouldn't win Eurovision, more likely he's on the second place by public. Not all the time, but more likely past six years, it's, it was always like this. Winner or second one. Four times winner, two times second one. So the public has amazingly like much more concentrated votes than basically a jury. You know, they are be better, like the juries are voting for much more spread songs than the public. It's, I'm very inter interested it will, if it will be also this year or not, or it will be again like last year, the huge difference between public vote and jury vote. And I believe it will be like that because we have uh, joke songs or trashy, more like not really, musical quality of songs some of them which will be voted by public for sure because they are funny but if you're a juror and you are have responsible for voting for the best it's very hard to put points on such songs you know like like uh, your credit is very going close to zero so i think there will be again big shift differences but it doesn't mean that the public winner wouldn't win eurovision anyway 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 i was also expecting non-qualifiers, how scoreboard, because this is actually more important. Like if you go to the finals, it, this is the first victory, but how scoreboards are accurate in non-qualifications. And this is very, very interesting because in here, 20 to 25% disaccuracy, like let's say 75 to 80% accurate results. So it's much more accurate to determine losers than let's say winners. And actually it's a little bit more logical. And it's getting better. Less countries, of course, are about to not qualify. And even the worst thing on this is that this scoreboard, people are very accurate in it. And this is crazy that, you know, for example, I wrote in here, that in scoreboard for 2024, it's still Germany in the loser countries, but Germany kind of cannot be a loser country. They are 26th, the, the worst. So it means that somebody who's on 28th place or, you know, maybe 
15. But this is the thing that somebody who like qualify by scoreboards is not qualifying. Definitely not this year and definitely in other years. So this made the most like mostly there were like two countries, Spain, UK, Spain, Germany, UK, Spain and so on. So if I just took those out and put those, it will be even more accurate. It will like the, 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 the fans are crazy about it. Like to who won't qualify, it's much more. This is crazy, you know, so definitely this I would consider if I'm a producer of some of those countries who are below 27 or on 27 and below or even maybe 26, 25, 25th, I would definitely try to do something even more because that means that for most of the fans you are not interesting already and the accuracy, it's crazy. It's more likely not go in your favors, even if, especially when you're even lower in the odds. So it's uh, alarm, you know, but of course those can still change, but definitely I would be alarmed. In 2017, four mistakes, but also 18 non-qualifiers, right? Now we have 11, you know, you see like seven countries just left. It's crazy. This is a, also not good for Eurovision because it's not that drama. Uh, 2018, five mistakes, the most from 17, but in 2019, only four mistakes, 2021, from 13 county, countries, they did five mistakes, but it was public and juries combined. In 2022, three mistakes from 15 non-qualifiers, but 2023, where only public was voting, only two mistakes from 11. That's almost, almost 90%, almost 90% chance of successful rate. That means that one and half country from the list will not make it, you know, which is crazy, crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, what I also wrote, the non-qualifiers in 2024 will be again 11. So probably the chance that it will be that accurate, it's very, very high. And that's it. Like, uh, I don't know how to, but I, I'm very glad that something like this exists because it gives us the content, it gives us the things to think. People are sharing it on social media, you know. They have their favorites, you say like sometimes like why, how, but it's how the people will be also voting. It's a, re it's a little bit of reflection. It's maybe not a reflection of the after all scores. Of course, it cannot be because if people are scoring now and during, they don't really change their opinion. They don't update it that often. So when the semifinal starts, they won't update it again. So that's maybe the mistake. But the non-qualifiers accuracy, this is... You know, this is alarming. So for countries who are below, below 25 or and 25, 25th, 24th included, I would be really, really be alarmed and do something about it and try to get your song everywhere possible. And definitely I wouldn't focus just on the bubble because as I said, it's the percentage of viewers from bubble. It's low after all, even it's a huge amount of people in general viewership and general probably even vote sending. It's not really that huge, you know, community. It's not, it's not, not that crazily influential as it seems. So if I'm the producer, I definitely wouldn't concentrate just on you guys. Sorry, but I for sure, I would concentrate on much wider audience, even much more wider because those are the people who are not decided yet. Most of you and or lots of you are already decided who would you vote and you don't care and you won't change it just by principle. I know you and this is okay because it's like fans in football, like you're in front of uh, Real Madrid and even they're playing a worst football ever, you just want to change Real Madrid for some other club. It's, it, is, it doesn't work this way, so I understand you. But if I'm a producer, I know that I cannot change your mind, I really hardly. So why should I invest a lot of energy for like very super low number of percentage of changing your mind? Then I can influence the minds who are not even knowing about Eurovision, for example. It's much, that it makes much more sense to invest money over there than to you. And it's might sound like harsh. I definitely would send the, if I can, I would send the artist to the pre-parties and so on to have this atmosphere, to have this chance to present the song and so on. But if I would talk about my marketing, that would go outside this bubble 100% because that's much more relevant because in here you're decided anyway. But you can have completely different opinions. Tell me what you think about this podcast video, craziness, whatever. I don't know how to call those things because I come with the plan and I'm talking, 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 but I like it. 
I like to give you a little bit different view, different edge. You can think about it and you can maybe also change some of your behaviors about it or come with your own maths. I'm very curious about it, but write me in the comments below what you think. Also, don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe the channel if you haven't done it yet. Buy me a coffee if you would like to support this channel or give me a super like and yes, ring the notification bell not to miss any of my videos and watch my other videos. I have so many that you will definitely find your favorite. I'm curious about it. Let's grow this crazy community with me, crazy guy in the middle, but I'm part of you. So yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.